do better than that? Come on. Father, we just thank and praise you. We glorify your name in this place. Hallelujah. Nothing's impossible for you, God. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. We yield right now ourselves completely to you. Have your way tonight. We thank you, Father God, for the opportunity just to worship you and now to hear your word. Holy Spirit, you're free to move up and down every hour and in and out of your row to touch, to heal, to deliver, to set free and make whole. Whatever's wrong in anyone's life, we thank you that tonight it will be made right. And we just give you all the glory, honor, and praise for your might. In Jesus' name, we're ready to receive from you. Amen. Come on, give God another hand clap of praise. Amen. Why don't you greet somebody who's near you, somebody who's around you, tell them that you're glad that they made it on tonight, and then you may be seated. Praise God. How many of you guys know you're blessed on tonight? Yes, you know. I said, how many of you guys know you're blessed on tonight? Now, are you blessed because of how good you've been? Are you blessed because of how much good you've done? Are you blessed because you're just that, that amazing? Some of y'all hesitated on that. You're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yes, I am amazing. I am amazing. How many of you guys are blessed because of how good God is? How many of you guys are blessed because he loves you? How many of you guys are blessed because his grace is sufficient in your life? Amen. You know, God is just so good. And, and, and the more we, we learn about his grace and the more we learn about the Holy Spirit and, and, and the things of God, the more I'm just convinced that there's just no thing that can, that can mess you up here on earth. I'm convinced that you simply have won and you have the victory. You got the victory. You're not defeated. You've already won. You are victorious. Amen. And, and you got to know that. Amen. You got to know that you're not in some deep battle and, and that there's, there's a chance that you might lose. Amen. You got to know that there's not a chance that you may fail or in the sense of this whole thing is just going to fall apart. No, you, you got the greater one on the inside of you and you have the advantage and you already have the victory. You already got healing. You already got increase. You already got promotion. It's already yours. Now, do you believe it is the question? I mean, it's yours. If you're willing to listen to the Holy Spirit, if you're willing to follow what he said, what he says, he will never lead you wrong. You will always end up at the right destination at the right time, getting the right stuff for your life. That's God's promise. That's his promise. When Jesus went up on that cross, man, and, and he died and, and, and set us right with God again, the blessings of God at that moment flooded and overtook your life, even though you weren't even born yet. You were set up for victory at the cross. You were set up for victory at the resurrection. I mean, that's, that's God's promise for your life. This is for somebody. That I this is not even my message. But, but, but you're, you're, you're victorious. Amen. And you got to know that. You got to walk around with that type of confidence now. Amen. It's like, a, it's like a kid whose parents are rich, you know what I'm saying? And, and as that kid gets older, you know, whether that kid, I mean, when that kid is younger, whether they know it or not, they're okay. All is taken care of financially in their life. They ain't got a bill that they're ever going to have to worry about. Now, whether they know it or not, whether they believe it or not, that's the truth. Amen? And as that kid gets older, the more he or she begins to believe and understand what their inheritance is, the more they begin to believe that, the more they'll begin to live like it and fall in line like it. How crazy would it be for this kid's parents to be a billionaire and they left them inheritance of millions and that kid is walking around, uh, that young adult is walking around like they broke. You know what I'm saying? Dressing like it, acting like it, talking like it. They're depressed. I ain't got no money. I just, da, da, da. It's the, it would be the craziest thing in the world, wouldn't it? So it is for a believer who is going through things here on earth who has the Holy Spirit living on the inside of them, who has the righteousness of God on their life, who has the blood of Jesus that has washed their sins. We are victorious. 
I'll say it again. We are victorious. See, I know, I know, guys, I, like I said, I've been in church my entire life since I was three years old, and I, and I know we're so used to coming uh, and hearing messages on, you know, you know, well, you know, here's how you can make it through and this, that, and the other, but I'm just telling y'all, God has put something on my heart and a fire in my heart just to continue to remind us we've already won. We've already won, and what we're doing is we're changing the way we think to line up like victors. We're changing the way we think to live like champions. Amen? You, you're, you're not, you're not the, um, what do they call it when, when you're, you're the guy that they don't pick to win the fight or to not win the game? Uh, yeah, you're not an underdog. Amen? The favor is on you. And, and, and the favor is not just on you to win. Here's the reality. The favor is on you to win, and you've won. You've already won. Why? Because of what God has done in your life through grace. Grace has made available everything you need. And you have to just position your thinking. Switch your thinking to just know what it is. What, what is your mindset? Amen? What is your mind? Because it starts there. It starts with understanding that God loves me and then setting my mind to say, I am a champion. I am victorious. Amen? And once you continue to confess that and you know that and you believe that, I promise you, you will now position yourself to hear from the Holy Spirit on how to walk out your victory. Amen? Because we have a lot of us who, who, who know what I'm saying is true, but then we struggle to see the manifestation in our lives. Anybody ever been there before? Amen. So what is, what is the bridge to get me from what I know to now walking in the wisdom of God? I'm here to tell you tonight, that's the Holy Ghost. Just like Jesus was the bridge to get man from where he was at to the point of salvation, so it is that the Holy Spirit is the one to bridge man from where he's at in his saved state to seeing the gospel of grace administrated in his life. The Holy Spirit has been sent to help us here on earth obtain all that grace is made available. That's how I how I get all this stuff I'm talking about, all this victory, all this living as a champion. Okay, that sounds good. I believe it now. Now what do I do? Now you follow the Holy Ghost. And that's what we're going to talk about uh, in our a brief time together tonight is the Holy Spirit and how to spend quality time with him. How to spend quality time with the Holy Spirit. Because how many guys know you can, you, can, you can have some time with someone, but there's a difference between having some time with someone and then having quality time. Amen? And, and, and actually, I changed, let me say this title the way I wrote it down because I changed it because I kept using the word spend and the Holy Spirit reminded me. He said, no, they're not spending. You know, when you spend something, you just spend and it just is what it is. And he just said, just titled it this, having quality time with the Holy Spirit. Having quality time with the Holy Spirit. That is so important if I want to see God's provision take place in my life. You guys remember we kind of started this particular Wednesday night series. We had titled it, um, oh, what did I say? Uh, you got it, now listen to the Holy Ghost and go get it. Because <laughs> you got it. But in order to go and get it, in order to see this provision for your life, you have to spend quality time with the Holy Spirit. Coming to church is going to help. Reading your word is absolutely going to help. But there will be nothing that will replace spending that time with Holy Ghost. Remember, the Holy Spirit is, is the third part of the Trinity. And, 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 and Well, let me put it this way. He's a part of the Trinity. Sometimes we, we, we put him as a third part, and in our minds, he becomes less than Jesus and God. So we have to be careful of that. He's, he's just as powerful, just as awesome as the, as the other two, amen? And the Holy Spirit is a real person. And it is the Holy Spirit, as we've talked and talked about, who is functioning right now on earth inside of you. Amen? 
Let's look at a few things real quick just to recap from what we talked about last week and then bring ourselves up to today. When we were together last week, I gave you kind of these steps to seeing provision take place in your life. And I started off with number one, God speaks. Anything that's happening in your life that's going to be a blessing, that's going to be the manifestation of grace is all, going to always start with a word from God. Not a word from uh, yourself, not a word from a friend or whatever like that. It's going to start with a word from God. He is the creator of the goodness in your life. So God speaks first, and then once God speaks, it's important that we hear what he says. It's important that we listen to what he says, because how many of you guys know that God is always talking, but have I positioned myself to hear him? You've shown up in service tonight. I, I was going to be talking either way it went. But unless you were properly positioned, you wouldn't have heard whatever I was saying. Amen? Unless you're uh, on the south side, because the south side is in the house on every Wednesday night, watching us through the street. Amen? I'll say what's up to the south side. <laughs> And those who have shown up at that, that community group, at that house, they are positioned to hear. But if I have not tuned into the stream or I have not shown up at service, no matter what amazing word, no matter what revelation goes forth, I won't hear it. And therefore, it won't have any effect in my life. So God speaks, and then we have to be positioned to hear and listen to him. And even once we hear and listen, now we have to make a choice. Do I believe it? He speaks, we hear and listen. We got to decide to believe it or have faith, amen? The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by what? Word. The word of God. If you want to know why you may have a belief problem or a faith problem, I would challenge you to check out the word that you're hearing. Amen? A lot of people had a hard time when Dr. Dollar started preaching on the gospel of grace, and it was because they had not really taken time to spend uh, in, in, in the word concerning the gospel of grace. Pastor Taffy is talking about biblical equality, amazing revelation coming uh, forth on that. And if you don't take time to look at what the word of God says about biblical equality and this, that, and the other, you'll be still talking about it was Eve's fault at the tree, uh, you know, and, and, and that's why uh, women now are cursed and blah, 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 blah. Now, what does the word of God say? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so if I want to believe, if I want to have faith, I got to listen to what God says. They work together. Amen? Now, once I get to the point of believing and having faith, now there's another choice. I now have to make a choice to obey. Holy Spirit's not going to make me do anything. Amen? Amen? God will be constantly talking, he'll be constantly speaking, he'll be constantly telling you what's the right thing to do and what to stay away from. And it is, your, your life is a sum total of your decisions to obey the Holy Spirit. That's, that's what it is. My life adds up to a sum total of the decisions that I've made to obey the Holy Spirit. Now, the opposite of that is true as well. <laughs> your life is also a sum total of the opportunities that you've had to disobey the Holy Ghost. Exhibit A. <laughs> that we've already talked about before. Wife said, don't go play soccer. I'm going to play soccer if I want to. Holy Spirit says, you better listen to your wife. Don't play that soccer. Play the soccer. My life is a sum total. Amen. God didn't do this to me. Come on now. Did God do that to me? Why do bad things happen to good people? God didn't do this to me. I did this to me. I can't even say the devil did it. For real. Did the devil somehow get inside my leg and, and, and rupture my Achilles? No. A bad decision to disobey. Yeah, I said disobey my wife, who has the Holy Spirit inside of her, what I call the rest of me. Didn't listen to the rest of me, who knew something about my body that I didn't even want to listen to. I knew it about my body, too. Holy Spirit told me the same thing, but I didn't want to listen. So in his love for me, he spoke to my wife, because this is her body as well, amen. And he spoke to my wife and said, uh-oh, danger, danger. He's not listening. <laughs> Time to save your body. And so she spoke, speaking what she heard, and I, I, I ignored it. I didn't believe in it. I didn't have faith in it. Why? Can I, can I be really transparent with y'all without y'all looking at me funny? Why? Why? 
Well, you know, you know, I, I'm the one that, that normally does this and that and the other when it comes to the things of God. And Yeah, Melissa can hear from God, but all of a sudden in my mind, I put her, her revelation a little below mine. Amen. Because, oh yeah, I know I'm, I'm learning about biblical equality and I believe everything Pastor Taffy's saying. But in this case, with it being my body, I know better uh, than what she would know. Well, what happened to the two becoming one? What happened to she can hear the Holy Spirit just as well as I can? See, you, you got to make the choice to listen and then obey. You got to be totally sold out and totally committed that Holy Spirit, whatever you say to me, I will do it. If you want to live a life of victory and success. The moment you begin to crown yourself God is the moment you'll find yourself in these types of situations. And I'm not alone. We have different things that have happened in our lives. But I'm just telling you how to avoid it and stay out of it in the future. Amen. I told you guys there's two ways that I've seen so far that people learn on earth. Words and pain. And I'd rather take the word. <laughs> Amen? Amen. So I got to listen. Then I got to make a choice to obey. And then when I obey, what will happen is whatever's needed to do whatever God has called me to do, I'll discover the provision for it. Whatever I need to do what God has called me to do, he's already provided the tools, the resources, all that's necessary to do whatever he's called us to do. He tells you, love your neighbor. Oh my gosh. That person that just cussed me out, that person that just lied on me, God has already provided the love on the inside of you. He's not telling you to now somehow become powerful enough to forgive. He's saying, you trust me and allow my love that's shed abroad in your heart to overtake you, allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you, allow him to heal you, and then you will have the power by my grace to forgive and walk in love. But he, we hear him and he tells us to do something and then we make a choice that either I'm going to trust his provision or not. I'm telling you, God has provided all you need. We saw it with Abraham and Isaac. When Abraham uh, was supposed, uh, go, supposed to go up on a mountain and sacrifice Isaac, Abraham made the choice to hear, listen, obey. He went up on the mountain, and then what did he find on the mountain? The ram in the bush. The provision to obey God was already put on that mountain. And it even said when Abraham was talking to God, and God said, just start the journey, and then I'll tell you which mountain to go to. Now, what if Abraham would have said, you know, I, I know this area, Lord, and, and I think this would be a better mountain for me to sacrifice for you on. You know I'm a firm believer that he probably would end up killing his son because the ram was on that mountain. Not the mountain he chose. It was on the mountain God led him to. That's why they called that place what? Jehovah Jireh. That was the place God provided. Not the, they didn't call it Abraham Jireh. They called it Jehovah Jireh. And I, I don't want to have a life full of Archie Gyros. I don't want to have a life full of places where I provide it for me. I want to submit to the will of God. I want to submit to the Holy Spirit to be more specific and say, Holy Spirit, you tell me where to go, what to do, and when to do so that I can give you the praise, glory, and honor for the manifestation of grace in my life. Amen. That's what we're talking about, amen? amen? So as I listen to him and obey and all that I need, I'll discover it along the way. So understand this. Your obedience does not create provision. Your obedience does not create the provision. His love does. He created the ram in a bush, not Abraham. Amen? Abraham discovered via obedience what his love created or what his grace created. Say, I already got what I need. My obedience doesn't create provision. My obedience simply discovers his provision. My obedience only assists me in obtaining what grace has already given me. Think about that. My obedience only assists me in obtaining what God's favor, what his grace has already made available for me. And I only have that because of his love for me. 
That's why the enemy is working overtime trying to attack your mind, making you think you're worthless and not worth his love. Because if you don't believe you're worth his love, then you'll have a hard time, a heck of a time, receiving his grace. I'm not worthy. No, you're not. But because of the righteousness of God that was put on you because of the blood of Jesus, you're now worthy. And if you understand that and you believe that, then you'll be willing to accept that, wow, he loves me regardless of my behavior. He loves me regardless of what I do. That's the truth. Think about it, parents. All my parents in the room. You love your kids regardless of what they do. So why can't God? Why do we, why do we stamp God as this God that only loves me when I act right? What we're doing is we're mixing the idea of God loving me and then me obtaining what God has provided for me based on my behavior. Let me make that a little clearer. God loves you because you're his child. And he has provided everything that you need. However, in order to obtain what he's given you, you have to listen to the Holy Spirit. And if I am full of uh, sin and full of fear and full of all these things, I will make that my voice and I won't listen to the Holy Spirit. Therefore, I won't achieve or obtain what God's love and his grace has made available for me. You see the difference? It's like having a kid and you got a car for him. And the car is there. You got the car. It's yours. Once you turn 16, that's your car. But of course now, if you don't do what's needed to be done, to obtain what I've given you, if you don't go and get your driver's license, if you don't go and do whatever needs to be done, these things, you have to obey and do these things so that you can legally drive that car. My love has already provided that car. My grace, my favor has already provided that car. I love you whether you go get your license or not. I've given that car for you wherever, whether you go get your license or not. But you won't drive it until you get your license. That's how it is with God. He's like, I've given you everything you need. Now, are you willing to listen to the Holy Spirit so that you can obtain what my grace has made available? If you understand that, say amen. amen. So, I got to make a choice to listen to him and obey. Let's look at a, a few scriptures on this. Uh, look at John 10, 27 through 30. John 10, 27 through 30. Because before the Holy Spirit came on the scene, and we talked about this a little bit last week, you had God the Father speaking. Uh, then you had the law come into play. Uh, then you had Jesus come into play as well. And these were the ways that God was speaking here on earth. But when Jesus was here, he said some things as he was getting ready to be on his uh, way out. Uh, let's look at this in the King James Version. And this is it's so important to see this. It says, my sheep, and this is Jesus talking, my sheep hear my voice, and what? I know them, and they follow me. How many guys know sheep obey? Amen? I, I, I know the voice of God. Did you see that, what he said? My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. That alone tells me I got the ability to hear and know God's voice. You, you think that's simple, but a lot of people struggle with the fact of, can I even hear God? You'd be amazed at how many adult Christians I'll talk to that says, man, I, I have a hard time hearing God's voice. I want to tell you that you are well able to hear the voice of God. Amen? It says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Verse 28. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hands. That's some good news. Verse 29. My Father, which gave them to me, is greater than all. <clears throat> no man is able to, pluck, uh, able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Verse 30. I and my Father are one. Now, I think that's interesting because Jesus is saying, my sheep are my voice and the voice of the stranger they will not follow. But then at the end of this uh, certain area of scripture, he says, I and the Father are one. So my sheep hear my voice, the voice of Jesus. But he's saying, but I'm also the Father. What is he saying? Well, we've seen in John and other scriptures, Jesus said, I'm not saying anything other than what the Father is telling me to say. Everything I say is what he's saying. So if you're following my voice, talking about Jesus, then you're following the voice of God. If you understand that, say amen. 
So Jesus right here, he was the one on earth that was teaching. He was the one that was leading. He was the one that was guiding. And if you wanted to be successful on earth at this time, before the cross, you needed to follow Jesus. If you wanted to be successful in the kingdom of God, you needed to go and listen and follow Jesus, thereby, you know, what, what many have said, becoming a follower of him. What we've labeled nowadays as being a Christian. The Holy Spirit was operating in the earth through Jesus at this time. Amen? Let's look at uh, John 16, 13. Now, just remember that, that at this point, it was, it was Jesus and the Holy Spirit operating through him. But then things begin to, uh, Jesus began to talk about what was going to change. It says, how be it when he, talking about the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. So Jesus is marking something right here. He's saying, listen, I, I've been your teacher and I'm your teacher and everything, but when the Holy Spirit comes, it'll no longer be me It'll be him who's going to teach you and guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. Here we go again. But whatever he will hear, hear from who? From God. Whatever God, whatever the Holy Spirit will hear from God, that shall he speak and he will show you things to come. So Jesus has now said, listen, you won't hear from me specifically anymore. And he actually says that in the scripture. He says, I I'm not going to speak much more. We're going to look at that in a second. But when the Holy Spirit comes, everybody say, after the cross. After the cross, after the cross he's the one that you're going to listen to. Now, now, now let's, let's, let's not go too fast past this. Jesus, they were able to physically see and physically touch and physically follow. But the Holy Spirit is not physical. And Jesus is saying, he's real, and you're going to follow him like you follow me. Amen? But what has happened in, 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 in the way we are as humans, we often want somebody physical, you know, to follow and everything like that. So we've either made a pastor our Holy Spirit, or we've made ourselves our Holy Spirit, but we, we, we've gotten to the point that we have begin to fade away from following the Holy Ghost and we're trying to follow a new Jesus. And God set it up a very specific way. It is the Holy Spirit that we are to be following right now. Amen? Let's look at this a little deeper. Go to John uh, 16, it's where we're at. But go back one scripture. We're going to look at verse 12 and we're going to read this in context all the way up to verse 15. Jesus is talking, he said, I have yet many things to say unto you. Let me put this in context too. What he was doing was he was sitting down with the disciples and he was preparing them for his death. He was preparing them for his crucifixion and everything and he was kind of setting them up in a way to say, listen, don't be afraid, don't be scared, here's how this thing is going to play out. And so in that conversation he said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you can't bear them now. Let's look at that in the Amplified and see what it says. I, I think that's very interesting that he said, I got stuff to tell you, but I can't, you, you're not going to be able to handle it. He said, I have still many things to say to you, but you are not able to bear them or to take them upon you, or you can't grasp them right now. Now remember, Jesus loved the disciples. There was no way in the world he wanted to leave them hanging at all. But he said, you can't grasp what I'm about to tell you. And then right after that, he goes into verse 13, which says, but when he, the spirit of truth, the truth-giving spirit comes, he's going to guide you into all truth. So he said, I got some things to tell you. There's some secrets I want to let you in on. There's some stuff I want to tell you about, but I can't tell you because you're not ready. Why weren't they ready? Because the spirit of truth hadn't come. They hadn't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit like Jesus had to when he was baptized by John. Once he received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, he was able to take in and take on the power of God, and then he understood and was able to walk in things that he couldn't walk in as just Jesus before the baptism. 
And he was telling the disciples the same thing. He was saying, listen, there's some stuff after the day of Pentecost that the Holy Spirit's going to tell you and let you in on that I, even though I've taught you for these three years, there's so much more that the Holy Spirit's going to come in and he's going to take over and he's going to be the new teacher. Can I be as bold as to say something to y'all? And I'm going to say it anyway, but <laughs> do you know what Jesus just said in these two scriptures? That the three years that he taught them, that wasn't it. There was so much more. And do you know that some people try to live in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? I'm not putting those scriptures down. I'm just saying that Jesus himself is saying, don't stop at just the Gospels. There's so much more. There's so many more secrets. There's so much more stuff beyond just when I was physically with you is what Jesus is saying. And the Holy Spirit will be the one to teach you and to guide you in these things or the whole full truth. I'm telling you the truth, but he said the Holy Spirit is going to tell you the whole full truth. For he will not speak his own message on his own authority, but he will tell you whatever he hears from the Father. He will give you the message that has been given to him, and he will announce and declare to you the things that are to come that will happen in the future. Now you see this in context. It's a, it's a whole other thing. Jesus is saying, listen, I'm your teacher. I, I've given you exactly what you need, but now there's more. And the Holy Spirit's going to be the one to give you that. It's like you're trying to get a degree in, in school and you have one teacher and that was your, your teacher for that year, but you don't get the degree, you're not done. What they told you was 100% true, but it wasn't everything. You got to go to the next class and get Miss Smith, and in Miss Smith's class, she's going to tell you the rest of what you need to know. Amen? And that's what Jesus is saying. He's saying, listen, this was 101. I, I just was showing you how to be saved. I was just showing you uh, 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 that you're the righteous. I was just showing you that, you know, through my blood, uh, you, you'll be redeemed. I was showing you that if you believe, salvation is yours. But the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he's going to lead you into all truth. He's going to remind you that you're the righteousness of God. He's going to teach you about what unbelief is and about how to stay out of sin and all that type of stuff. He's going to tell you that the devil is the one that's defeated. Verse 14, it says, he will honor and glorify me because he will take of, receive, and draw upon what is mine. Who do you think he's talking about when he said what is mine? You see that capital M? Why do we put a capital M on what is mine? Because he's talking about God. The Holy Spirit is going to receive and he's going to draw on from God. And he will reveal he would declare, he would disclose, and transmit it to you. The power of God, the secrets of God, the wisdom of God is yours through the Holy Ghost. Verse 15. Everything that the Father has is mine. Ain't that what we just said? Look at that as an equation. Everything that the Father has equals mine. Go back to the scripture right before that. He will honor and glorify me because he will take up, receive, draw upon what equals mine. What equals mine? They just said it in the scripture right after. Go back to 15. What equals mine is everything that the Father has. The Holy Spirit is going to draw upon everything that the Father has. And he's going to transmit it to you. I don't know about you, but I'm excited because I got everything that the Father has. I got healing. I got joy. I got power. I got peace. I got everything that the Father has. It's mine. You missed a really good place to say amen. amen. Everything that the Father has is yours. He said, that is what I meant when I said that he, this Holy Spirit, 
will take the things that are mine, everything that the Father has, and will reveal, declare, disclose, and transmit it to you. Whew. Everything that the Father has is mine. Everything that the Father has is mine. I don't like to use the phrase blow my mind, but that blows my mind. Everything that the Father has, grace has made available to me, and it is mine. What you need, it's yours. And the Holy Spirit, the administrator of God's grace, is the one who transmits it to you. If you understand that, say amen. So Jesus passed on the teaching and the speaking mantle to the Holy Ghost. So as a believer today, who is my teacher? As a believer today, who is my guide? As a believer today, who is the voice of God that I'm following? Amen. So if the Holy Spirit is the one I'm to be listening to, how many of you guys know it is imperative that I have quality time with the Holy Ghost? The Holy Spirit only speaks what God says. Jesus was the Word of God, and the Holy Spirit is the voice of God. I got the Word, but I got to hear the voice if I want to know how to walk in the word. There's many people who know the word. The Bible says the demons and the devils uh, and, and, uh, and Satan, they, they knew the word, but they ain't got the Holy Ghost. Amen? We have the word, now we have to follow his voice. The voice brings life to the words for your practical everyday living. The voice brings life to the word for your practical, everyday living. As you spend time with the Holy Ghost every day, he will take that word and bring it to life and tell you how to live and walk every single day. Amen? So here's the question. Do we follow the Bible or do we follow the Holy Spirit? Let's see. <laughs> God, who is the Holy Spirit, will use the scriptures to guide us. He'll use the scriptures to fill us up. He'll use the scriptures and he will accomplish the will of the Father in every believer's life. The Holy Spirit is the person that I'm supposed to be following, and he will use the word in my everyday living. Without the spirit, I wrote down, the Bible wouldn't really be of any real service to us. And I know that's stepping on religion and, and things like that, but I want you to really hear what I'm saying. I wrote down, I wrote down notice that the Bible is our one weapon we really have against Satan. In Ephesians 6, 17, it calls the Bible the sword of who? It calls the Bible the sword of who? The spirit. Let's look at that real quick. Ephesians uh, 6, 17. Let me show you this, because this is so important. Ephesians 6, 17. And uh, we'll look at this in the uh, King James. Uh, well, actually, you can leave it here, yeah. It says, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword that the Spirit wields, which is the Word of God. Now, that's powerful right there because you know this whole time, many Christians have been walking believing this is the sword that we wield. We've seen ourselves as the one wielding the Word of God. But yet it says, who's wielding this sword? So as I follow the Spirit, who it's his sword, and he lives on the inside of me, I have success. But the moment I start trying to take that sword and wield it the way I think it should be wielded, 
I've now placed myself and counted myself as God. That's a powerful thing. See, we're, we're, we're rightly dividing the word of truth right now. We often wonder, how am I following the word, yet I'm still not getting the results in my life? Because you've picked up the sword, and you begin to cut what you thought you were supposed to cut. And the Holy Spirit was like, that wasn't what we were supposed to cut. You've attacked what you thought you were supposed to attack. And he's like, that wasn't what we were supposed to attack. And he says, wait a minute, wait a minute, give me, give me my sword back, you know. Now, spend some time with me, and then we'll do this thing the way I know we need to do it. See, we, we, we've taken the driver's seat from the Holy Ghost, and it's time to give it back to him. And, and, and I'm, I'm only telling you what the words are. It's his, it's the sword that the Spirit Wields. It's not just the one, it doesn't say like this is the sword of the spirit that he made and he's now handed it over to you. It says he wields it. He's the one that uses it. Doesn't mean we don't, don't know, hear what I'm saying. It doesn't mean I can't confess the word. I'm, I'm, of course I'm going to confess the word because the Holy Spirit's going to tell me what to say and when to say. But I'm just not going to arbitrarily just start saying a word because I think it's what I'm supposed to say. No, Holy Spirit, what do I need to talk about? Go to John 3, 16. Really, Lord, but I, I need healing in my life. I think I should just say by his stripes I'm healed. Go to John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. And he says, now confess, I got everlasting life. He knows what I need to say and when I need to say it. Amen. You got life. You will live and not die. God loves you. God loves you. God lo Wait a minute. If God loves me, then I'm healed. Amen. It's what I needed. But I could go and just say, by his stripes, I'm healed. By his stripes, I'm healed. And it won't have the same effect. Why? Because I'm wielding the sword. But when he's wielding the sword through me, and I obey, I will end up at the scripture saying what he wants to say, when he wants to say it, and that's how I have the victory in my life. We're talking about being precise with this thing. And how do I have precision as a believer? By spending time and listening to what the Holy Spirit instructs me to do. You understand that? Say amen. I'm telling y'all, we're after something here. No longer will we have these things where we spend all this time at church, spend all this time in the Word, spend all this time sowing and all that type of stuff and still don't see results. The missing ingredient, the missing piece is the main piece, which is following the leading of the Holy Ghost versus the, the knowledge that we have as Christians. There's a difference. So without the Spirit, the Bible wouldn't be any, of any service to us. Notice that the Bible is our one weapon against Satan, but it is the sword of the Spirit. If we replace the Spirit's presence with the Bible, we no longer have the sword of the Spirit. We have a human sword. It's one. I'll just read it the way I wrote it. As we will seek to use the Word of God through the wisdom of man. When it's a human sword, we take God's word and we try to use it with our wisdom. Like I said, I know the scripture. I'm, I'm going to say this scripture and I'm going to confess it here. And the Holy Spirit may say, be quiet for a minute. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. Remember, you got something that goes even beyond. Somebody say, he teaching heresy. No, I'm not. The, 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 when I pray in tongues, the Bible says I preach mysteries. I talk about secrets. Amen? I'm saying something that, that is contained in the power of the word, but is not in English vernacular. So this is something more powerful than what I could even just confess in the natural from that scripture. The Holy Spirit may say, be quiet and just pray now in the Holy Ghost. But am I willing to trust him enough on that? Or do I just relegate back to just, no, by, by his stripes I'm healed? Well, that's good. But there's a greater. And that is something that even I don't know. But my spirit knows exactly when and where it's time to release that bomb. Amen? So if we replace the spirit's presence with the Bible, we no longer have the sword of the spirit. We have a human sword. As we will seek to use the word of God through the wisdom of man, which will not be enough 
to understand and apply the real truth the Bible contains. We don't know enough to know what, when, where, and how to use that word. But the Holy Spirit is God and is Jesus. Not only does he know how to use that word, it's him. I said it's him. And so here we are again at that place of do I trust grace? Because grace is God's favor in my life. It's a gift from God, lest any man should boast, amen? And I won't have this salvation unless I'm willing to trust what grace is made available. And the Holy Spirit is the one trying to administrate what grace is made available. But I have to be willing to humble myself and spend time with the Holy Ghost so I can get used to listening to him and then following him even when it concerns when and how to use God's word. That sword is the number one weapon you got. And now we just learned how to properly wield it. I mean, this whole time I thought I was just supposed to confess a whole bunch of scriptures, just like rapid fire on the double, you know what I mean? The more scriptures I know, the more ammo I got in my gun. But who, who does that place the responsibility on all of a sudden? Me and my knowledge. Because what about the person that don't know a lot of scriptures? Are they just doomed? Oh, well, you better go and learn. You better memorize a bunch of scriptures because you got one bullet and you're going to need 99. No, I don't, need, I don't need the Holy Ghost because maybe I'm a new Christian and I don't know the scriptures. But I got the baptism of the Holy Spirit and I can speak in tongues. And when I release that language, I am releasing literally the word into the air. And I'll be more effective than the guy that knows 100 scriptures by just trusting the Holy Ghost. See, I got to get out the way. It's not about how much I know. It's about am I willing to obey the Holy Ghost? Amen. Amen. So there's a difference between following the leading of the Holy Spirit and then just religiously following the Word. There's a difference. Because I can just religiously follow the Word and still not have the results of grace in my life. Been there before. There are entire denominations that leave the Holy Spirit out. And they know the word, but have no power. Amen? So here's the way if I want to rightly respond when it comes to the word of God. Go to Philippians 4.13. We're going to read this in an easy to read version. Philippians 4.13. I like the way Paul put it here. I have strength for all things in Christ. Christ is the one who gives me the strength that I need to do whatever it is I must do. It's God. It's Christ. It's the Holy Ghost. They're the ones, they're the ones who give me the ability to do whatever I need to do, not me. I hear and then I, I believe and then I obey. I hear when they speak, and I believe, and I obey. They speak, he speaks, Holy Spirit speaks. I hear, I believe, I obey. That's it. It's him in me that gives me the strength. It's him in me that gives me the knowledge. It's him in me that gives me the wisdom. It's him in me that gets me to my place of provision. Man, I would love to sit up here and tell you when you give $1,000, that's what's going to give you your breakthrough. It ain't going to give you your breakthrough unless the Holy Spirit tells you to do it. Did you hear what I said? It ain't going to give you your breakthrough unless the Holy Spirit tells you to do it. Now, we appreciate your $1,000. Feel free to give it. <laughs> but if you're looking for a return on your life, in your life, do what he tells you to do. Some people won't say that to you because it's all about, well, just, just give, 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 give. No, I'm, I, I'd rather see you give exactly what he tells you to do when he tells you to uh, give, what exactly he tells you to give, when he tells you to give it, and then when the manifestation begins to happen in your life and the overflow begins to overtake your life, then you have more and more to continue to give. See, I'd rather see you give in the, the hundred that he faithfully tells you to give, and then it grows to the thousand, and then the ten thousand, and this, that, and other, instead of just seeing you give the hundred for the next 30 years or 50 years or 80 years until you die. No, I want to see increase in your life. I want to see the word working in your life because the Holy Spirit is the one leading and guiding you. 
Amen? We're not just trying to pay bills around here. We want to see your life take off as you understand grace and you're empowered to change. We want to get the truth into your heart so that you can go out and change this world. And the only way that's going to happen is when you hear the Holy Spirit and then you follow. Amen? Somebody may say, well, you know, well, 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 well you know, you might not want to say that because a lot of people don't want to hear that. And they say, I could care less. Do you know who my daddy is? Now I'm talking about my, phys- my, my, my uh, spiritual dad here on earth. We don't, we, we just going to keep teaching the word. Give me one or two that are wishing, uh, willing to, to hear this and follow it out. Give me one or two and we'll end up with another Creflo and Taffy that'll go out and change this world. Will it be you? Hey, to the man. (laughs) So to see results in my life, I must avoid these works or actions that are based on my understanding. To see results in my life, I must have works and actions that are the result of my faith and what grace has done, my, my faith and what the Holy Spirit is telling me. These are right actions. Go with me real quick to Luke 4, 1. Even Jesus was spirit-led. Amen? Luke 4, 1 says, Now filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus returned from the Jordan River, and then the Spirit led him into the desert. Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit, and then he did what? He followed the Holy Spirit. Uh, Verse 14, skip over to uh, verse 14. So we all know he went through that whole ordeal in the wilderness, and he overcame in verse 14. Jesus went back to Galilee with what? The power of the Spirit. And stories about him spread all over the area around Galilee. Then he went to work. Jesus didn't even go into ministry until the Holy Spirit came upon him and then released him. So far be it for me to make any decision without the Holy Spirit. Amen? So I wrote down here, Jesus was spirit-led in everything that he did. He relied totally on the Spirit to guide him. And that was the key to his success. That was the key to his success. Following the Holy Ghost. So, so let me ask you tonight, How's your relationship with the Holy Spirit? That's the, that's the ultimate question over our last few minutes together that I want you to really meditate on right now. How's your relationship with the Holy Spirit? Having a relationship with him should really be my number one and top priority. He wants to commune with you. He wants an intimate relationship with you. There's there's a scripture here I want you to go to and look at real quick that talks about this. It is in Matthew 6, 6. Matthew 6, 6. Uh, Let's go to... We can read this version, yeah. It says, but when you pray, you should go into your room, another version says closet, and close the door. Then pray to your father. He is there in that, what type of place? Private place. He can see what is done in private and will reward you. I wrote down here, to know the Holy Spirit more intimately, we can't ignore what Jesus said in Matthew 6, 6. The King James says, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut the door, pray to the Father, which is in secret, well, this is actually the new, uh, the new King James Version. And the Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. That word closet, um, in the, I believe it's uh, Greek, it, it means tamion. T-A-M-E-I-O-N. And that word actually means secret place where one would hide his or her most valuable possession. That's what it originally meant, and as time went on, the word kind of evolved into a deeper meaning. The second meaning became a safe place to put one's money or treasure. And then it finally, as they worked on the translation even more, that word closet or secret place meant a bedroom or bed chamber. That word really drills down to the fact of this is an 
intimate place, a place where intimacy happens. All my married people say amen. amen. That's, that's, that's what, in the bedroom or chamber, this is an intimate, private place where secrets are shared. You could actually translate the verse to say this, when thou prayest, enter into thy bedchamber. Symbolically, what Jesus was saying was, just as a husband and wife enter into a bedroom and shut the door so they can bear secrets and bear their hearts and souls to one another in a time of intimacy, so also we should do with the Holy Ghost. This is a tender and special and intimate moment that is to be shared with you and him and no one else. That's what he's looking for from us on a regular basis. And just like a successful marriage needs that, that time of sharing and intimacy together so the two can be on one accord at all times, so it is with the Holy Ghost. If I'm struggling hearing him and I'm struggling uh, following him, then I got to go back to what am I doing in the bedroom with the Holy Ghost? That's a whole nother message, amen. <laughs> we might preach that next week. But think about it. Married folks, sorry kids, close your ears. <laughs> But if things ain't right in the bedroom, we, we not talking. We yeah, ain't right nowhere. Period. Don't y'all look at me like that, just smile. <laughs> but, but if there's no intimacy, if there's, if there's no things coming on, if, if I can't come into him and see what it is that he's wanting to tell me, then there, there can be no answers. There will be no solutions. Literally. We are divided, and we know what the word says about a house is divided against itself. It can't stand. All of a sudden, I'm a double-minded person. And we know what the word says in James about being double-minded. That person can't receive nothing from God. It all goes together. But when I'm having an intimate fellowship with him, when I'm communing with him, how do I do that? Get in that secret, quiet place. Make him, if you're writing down notes, make him priority. Now, that don't mean you got to physically go into a closet necessarily, but if that's your place, that's your place. It could be in your car on the way to work when there's no distraction. And you're just praying in the Holy Ghost. What should I say? Pray in the Holy Ghost. And then just talk to him. He is real. Say that with me. He's real. He's real. And talk to him. And then he will speak to you. He will answer you. Now, I, I would warn you, if you're if you, if you kind of new to this, I would warn you against driving and doing this. I'm for real. Because, again, again, if you're married, you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you'll sit down with your spouse and y'all had not talked in a long time and y'all been going through something, and the moment you actually have that moment of intim intimacy, something hits that room and, and you're crying and stuff. And, oh, oh, you know, you're like, what the world's going on? You know, well, well that, that thing just breaks on the inside of you, and the, so it is with the Holy Ghost. So be careful. Intimacy is a powerful thing. And intimacy with the Holy Ghost in that secret place. For my single folks, you've been looking for uh, that, that love and you've been looking for that intimacy. You've been looking for what I'm talking about and the answer is the Holy Ghost. You got needs. I know you got needs, but he will fulfill those needs through his intimacy. I'm talking to somebody. Sex won't be an issue outside of marriage, because you would have, have fulfilled all of that, that desire that was burning in you will be taken care of by spending time with the Holy Ghost. Because it's not sex that you need, it's intimacy. You think it's sex, and that's why you keep having it, because you're not fulfilling uh, that, that, that sex act, uh, that, that, that moment that you're having in sex, it's not what you really need. You, you think that's it. That's not it. It's the intimacy. You're trying to get something way beyond that, and you didn't know that's what you were looking for, but you're trying to get something way beyond that, and the Holy Spirit is waiting. And you don't have to keep giving yourself to person after person trying to find this thing, and the Holy Spirit is saying, listen, I got all you need. Just come talk to me. Just come spend some time with me. He'll overtake you in a way you've never been overtaken before. Just being intimate with them. Amen? So this, this word, Jesus is describing this special intimate place. 
that should be shared between you and him. And, and, and again, like I said, he's not just talking about getting in the physical closet. He's just saying, here's the attitude and the environment you need to have when you come into that time of prayer. So that, that means I, I really need to set aside this time. I really need to make it, make it a priority. I can't just, well, you know, I'm going to break. I'm just going to go spend some time with the Holy Spirit, and that's all you, that's your only time, that just that five minutes. That's, that's, that's okay, but how intimate can you get? I'm trying not to use these other analogies, but, but how intimate can you get in just those couple of minutes? No, you got to spend some time if you want to get the secrets. Amen? Because you're receiving from him will only be as fast as your brain can go. I mean, the Holy Spirit, there's no time or distance with him. But you're the one hearing, you're the one listening, and you're the one trying to translate what he's saying, if you will, you know what I'm saying, and, and kind of break it down and download it. So you've got to give yourself time to do that. You'll get something in those few minutes, but you won't get everything that you need to get. So you've got to make up your mind. How important is my intimacy with the Holy Ghost. Like the young lady said when she was giving a testimony about God hitting her from cancer, but, but the Holy Spirit had been waking her up at 4 o'clock in the morning on this certain food regimen that he had her on. And it enabled her body to fight the tumor and keep it from spreading all over like it would have otherwise. But she was willing to wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning for the majority of her adult life to do what the Holy Spirit was saying to do. Her intimacy saved her life. Because she prioritized it. I'm prioritizing the intimacy with the Holy Spirit in every area of my life. And as a result, seeing God's favor open up doors that, that only God could have did. He opened up a door today that I'll be free to share with you on another day. But opened up a door today that only he could have opened. Why? Because we're just being intimate with him. And he's telling us things to do and telling us things to say and telling us things to open up. And all of a sudden, when we do what he said to do, now the provision to do what he's called us to do is just showing up in our life. Not magically. He already created it, but because we followed him, we ran into it on the path that we should have been on. And it all started with communing with the Holy Spirit. So make a decision tonight. We got more to talk about, but we can pick up on it next week and finish it up because I don't want to rush this. This is so important about being able to, knowing how to spend time with them. This is the answer. As Pastor said, this is the most important message right now that I've taught you yet. Communing with the Holy Ghost because if, if, as, as I do that, all that grace is made available will manifest in my life. Just talking to a dear sister uh, today, right before church, talking about how, you know, there's a, a new job opportunity showed up in her life just because she listened to the Holy Spirit and turned another one down. She could have chased the first dollar that came in front of her, but she listened to the Holy Spirit and said, nope, there's no peace there. And then obeyed God, and something even better showed up, paying over double than what she was making. I said, that's, that's literally what we're talking about. God provided, that job was there, that increase was there, that money was there. Over 100% increase? Come on now. It was there, but had she taken the other things, she would have missed what was already there. But she trusted the Holy Ghost. She listened to him. She didn't wield the sword. She, she, she let him wield it through her. And then she obeyed, and provision was there. Guys, it's just that simple. He has provided all you need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So what I want you to do right now is just raise your hands with me. And I want you to just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. And as you pray in the Holy Ghost, I want you just to know that you are praying, as you pray in the Spirit, you're praying the secrets and the mysteries. You're speaking those things forward. And I want you to go ahead and pray out loud. You don't have to whisper. You, you a monk's family. Pray. 
Braco sola barre e se roore a mandaca. Brava shoya a mandre a soli a mandre casa. Brodo shola barre e se coli a mandre che si. Bricchi shola barriera a mandra casse. Bola mandre che si la barro shori a mandre aha. Già la barro o sola barre che si la batusi. Brema shola barre e si la barre casa. Brema sola barre e si la so la bako e la mandre che si. My children, if you would hear my voice and follow my words, you will see great and mighty victories. I have already provided. I have already provided by my will. Now trust my way. Healing is yours. Victory is yours. Operate in my wisdom and my might and everything, every sickness, every disease, every demon will be set to flight. Trust me in all that I instruct you to do and you will see great and mighty victory. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We trust you tonight, Father. We hear your voice and we know it. And we choose to follow it. And we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. And we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name. If you agree with that, say amen. Amen. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise. Well, did you get anything out of that tonight? Amen. Praise God. Well, um, man, that anointing's heavy in here. I'm, I just want to just stay in it for a while, but kind of go and cheer on the rockets. Glory to God. I, I hope somebody on the rockets can speak in tongues. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> you know, God will make up 13 points. You know, amen. But that's for another night. Hey, to the man. <laughs> Somebody say, but Steph Curry saved. I know, I know. <laughs> well, I, 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 hope, I hope this is blessing you. And I, I know it is, but I, I hope you're, you go home and you do what we're talking about. I hope you go home and you just mark, carve out some time tonight and just start tonight. Don't wait till tomorrow morning. Just carve out some time tonight and just start spending some time with the Holy Spirit like you never have before. You've been wanting to. But you've just been so doggone busy, you know? Uh, unbusy yourself. You know, I know you come home and you, you try to just lay down and rest. And, 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 and I challenge you, just, 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 just give them like 20 minutes. Just start off somewhere. Amen. Turn you on some worship music and, and, and go on and just get you in the, into a space. Leave your phone in the other room. Put my Bible on my phone. Just, leave, you know, you're about to go spend time with the Word. Just go on and <laughs> leave, leave your phone in the other room. And just, and just begin to worship him and, and, you know, praise and pray in the Holy Ghost and just spend some time with him. He's waiting on you. Amen? Amen. Well, um, if you want to worship God tonight with your giving, uh, I would encourage you now to just listen to the Holy Spirit right now. What would he say to you? Uh, this is a worship service. That just simply means it's a service where we get to obey what God is telling us. So let's obey him with our giving. If you need to offer an envelope there in the front of you on the pew, or if you want to give by text, it's probably the easiest way there is to give. Uh, you can do what's on the screen and, and trust God. Trust God. Don't, don't, you know, don't start calculating, you know, and all that, because again, that's, that's you taking over. Lord, what you want me to give? Then do it. Get in the habit of just do it. Uh, even, even you can, you can do that before you come to church. You, you know that, right? Just, Lord, what you want me to do? Then do it. Then when you show up, you're, you're just the, the kid in the class that's already done the homework, you know. <laughs> and you just do what he says and just show him that you trust him. Amen? Amen. I, I trust you. Done what you needed to do. Let's just go ahead and uh, go before God in prayer. Father, we speak right now to the gifts, to the offering, to the tithes that are being sown today in obedience to your word and your will. We acknowledge you with these gifts. And we know that you give seed to the sower. 
we also know that as we give, it will be given unto us a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men put back into our laps? You don't take anything from us, but you just continue to provide. So I thank you as we sow these seeds tonight. We receive back a hundredfold. In Jesus' name, amen. Ushers, you may serve the people. And as they're doing that on tonight, if you've heard something in your spirit on tonight and you know that you need to take action on it as it relates to salvation, or it could be baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, that's this power we're talking about. Jesus was Jesus, but he still received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which enabled him to go and preach and, and operate in the gifts of the Spirit. If that's what you want as well, I, I wouldn't leave out of the room without it because it is almost being an incomplete believer without it. <laughs> if you want to receive that gift from God, the baptism of the Holy Spirit tonight, then in a moment we're going to invite folks down to pray for them. You can come down. And last but not least, if you want to join the church, uh, this is an amazing church. Amen. We are an extension of World Changers Church in Atlanta. And man, there's no distance or time in the spirit. The anointing here is just like the anointing there. And we're of our father and mother. And we're just excited to see what God is going to do through us as time continues on. And if you believe that you're part of this vision and you're called to this place, then join. Don't, don't just, you know, show up every week and, and say, well, I'm still deciding. No, I'm just going to obey the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Do what he says to do, and then watch what he does in your life because you trusted him with where you were to be at home. So I've called for three things. One was salvation. The other was baptism in the Holy Spirit. And the last was about joining the church. If you would say yes on any one of those things, then I want you to come down to the front. For the rest of us, uh, what I'd like to see us do is stand to our feet and minister to those who are around us. Ask them if they need prayer on any one of those three things. If they say yes, they do need prayer on any one of those things or they want to join the church, then help them gun down to the front. Let's all stand to our feet and minister to those around us. Give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Well, raise your hands as we prepare to be dismissed. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you as we leave this place. We just go in your victory, Lord, and we thank you that your grace has made all that available. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the almighty God. To him be glory 
majesty, dominion, and power. I speak blessing over your life tonight. I speak greater opportunities as a result from your intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Doors opening that no man can shut. Opportunities coming forth that only he would be able to provide. And we receive this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, guys, we love you so much. Have a blessed week. We look forward to seeing you Sunday. You are dismissed.